Hey guys, so I got a lot of positive feedback on this image that I made last week and I had people asking me how I made it and how I use the multi-pass system in Octane uh, in Photoshop. So I'm gonna go through how I did that really quickly. It's not a full tutorial, it's just kind of a behind the scenes of how I made this. So I went to Unsplash and I typed in greenhouse and I found a whole bunch of really cool results. Something like this came up and this actually was one of the main inspiration photos that I had for the color scheme. I just really love the blues and the deep rich greens. Um, and there's just a whole bunch in here that really caught my eye and made me want to do a greenhouse type look. So this is Quixel Bridge, and if you don't have a subscription to Quixel, I highly recommend it because they have so much in terms of like surfaces uh, for materials as well as some 3D objects. So if you go to 3D plants here, you'll see all the plants that they have already scanned in, and they have anything ranging from cactuses to like these types of foresty plants that I use. This is one particular plant that I use. I believe these as well and this one as well as this one so there's actually a lot and there's a lot of good like floor type plants maybe not so much like tall trees but definitely shrubs and uh, ferns stuff like that so if you're looking for like a cobblestone texture you would go to surfaces and in stone and cobblestone we have all of this to choose from it's really great I love mega scans and I love Quixel. This is what I actually ended up modeling, which right now looks overblown because normally I have all the trees in here and that helps give a whole bunch of shadows. So the only things that I really actually modeled and even still it was really quick was just like these windows, for example, where I started off with, here I'm gonna turn off my roof. So I started off with just this one cube that I ended up like slicing and cutting until I made what looks kind of like a window plane and I removed the polygons in the center because then when I added it to a cloner and duplicated all that, I just added a glass pane or a glass box. Like it, it's just a cube that's really thin um, and still gives the glass a little bit of depth. And when you let that load, you can see the texture that I applied to it. So I basically duplicated this whole setup for the roof. And I kind of did the same thing for the back and for up here. And then these are just cubes with a, like a metallic kind of look to it. So you can see it looks a little bit like metal. It's not uh, super great up close because it doesn't need to be seen up close. So I didn't spend a ton of time on that. Now, the ground was a plane, which I then added a displacer to, and that's um, just this noise. It might freak out. Oh, it's doing okay. So yeah, without the displacer, it's totally flat. So you can see that it adds this bump to the ground. Um, the curves, basically, is just a sweep nerve with a spline that I ended up drawing out, and a little rectangle that has a little bit of roundness to it right here the sidewalk I believe was basically made the same way but I merged it since and I made this material so it's a 4k texture I have the roughness channel the diffuse and the normals all being used and then what I did here was I made a noise so that I could give places on the sidewalk where it's really wet looking um, and not have it just be like wet overall, but wet in certain places more so than others. I have this little um, Japanese girl model that I have, um, which helped me to like figure out the size of when I have to go into the shot where I need to be placed and um, like how big the trees need to be in comparison to a person. All right, so my forest, let's start turning things off before I turn them all on because it's gonna get crazy. All right, so I found my camera position for the most part and I started off with just kind of like one object. And that one object was, I don't even know how you pronounce this tree, but it's this tree. <laughs> and with the octane scatter, I scattered it along the surface of the dirt. But of course, 
I didn't want that to be on like the sidewalk because the side, you know, the dirt is also under the sidewalk. So that's where I have this um, vertex map that I painted. So if I turn the sidewalk off, I just literally painted in wherever the sidewalk would be so that um, A, the displacement is not, is actually using that. So the displacement for the dirt is going like below the sidewalk. So it's not actually touching. It's like going right. You, you see over here, it's like got a little slope. So yeah, this way it's not like right up against the sidewalk. So the octane scatter is using the dirt and the vertex map. Um, and then with this, you can kind of decide how many trees you want and what seed, which is the randomization that you want it to be. And I did this going one by one with every plant. Some of these plants I instanced, which is like where I made a duplicate of it and I stuck it specifically because I wanted that plant in a location that I just couldn't get with the randomization of the octane scatter. But, um, but for the most part, it's all being driven by the octane scatter. So this was, I called it my favorite fan tree. I just, I don't know what the plant's called, but I really love it. Um, and then I called this the bushy annoying plant. Yeah, you can see it's, it's a big plant and so it's beautiful. It's just that um, it ends up sometimes intersecting with other plants and I don't know of an easy way to fix that. So that's why I called it the bushy annoying plant. So we'll go back. So as you can see then, we need to add the tall trees and that's where everything starts coming together because it's now in shadow and not just like harsh direct sunlight. Um, oh, by the way, I do have a daylight that's on, um, which is where my sun is coming from. And then the octane sky, I used this Misty Pines HDRI that I found on the internet, which I thought reflected the environment best. Um, and I will turn the volume on in a little bit. So to show you guys what the seed actually does, this is the randomization number. And if I mess with that and choose any number from one to 10,000, um, I can see that my plants are growing in a different pattern, in a different formation. So this is something that I messed with a lot to try to like find the right composition. And if I'm using the material ID pass and seeing like the light pinkish trunks, you'll see that these guys keep moving until you kind of find something that you think works for your image. And for me, that was 9755. So then we have these tall trees, we have these like mid ground things, but we need some more like lower ground plants. And that's where these guys come in and it really fills everything in. I mean, there's, there's a lot <laughs> kind of going on here. Like there's a bunch of different variations of plants that I ended up putting in a bunch of different octane scatters. I don't know if this is um, the best way to work because I thankfully have like a pretty beefy system, but if you're working on a laptop, you're probably just not gonna be able to do as many octane scatters as I managed to cram in here. Um, but for the most part, Octane's really great with the Octane scatter and it's not crashy and it's, it's pretty good. So yeah, a whole bunch of different plants. Here's like a yellow and green plant that has different variations. Um, some darker plants that I called, I don't know the names of these plants. Some big leafy fan plants, some ferns. And again, with each one of these, I like meticulously went through the count and the seed to try to figure out um, where exactly, you know, I liked the placement best. And sometimes to see that better, I turned on my material ID pass, which I'll get to show you how to do those passes. And that helped me see like where all the plants are instead of just seeing it as one jumbled mush. You can see like, oh, okay, maybe this one's intersecting with this plant. So maybe we're not gonna use that seed. Let's change the seed or maybe we could lower the count or something. So I thought that was really useful. Okay, so then my floor stuff. So this is because a floor in a jungle or in a greenhouse is not going to be like really clean. It's going to have a bunch of stuff on it. So if you see here, or if I zoom in, yeah, you can already see here, I've got vines that are kind of scattering around the floor, which really helps because I imagine that 
you know, even like a really kept up and tidy greenhouse, there's probably still gonna be natural growing plants that the keepers don't, you know, want to, oopsies, don't want to destroy and just chop. The material ID pass is super helpful because you can see things like these guys that are going through the floor and that's a problem. And maybe sometimes you can't notice it in this mode, but with material ID pass on, you can, and then you can, for what I have to do for this is actually adjust the axis so that you can bump it up and then you'll see it like not touch through the floor anymore. You see that there and you see that I think we fixed the problem that was happening over here. Oh, actually we didn't fix all the problems, but anyways, you get the point. You have to go through and just make sure that things aren't totally touching um, the ground. And as well as some of these trees, maybe you want them to like lean. I've got the, um, what's called a normal align. Normally it's going to align with the floor. So if the floor is starting to shape like, you know, curve, then that plant or whatever is, you know, being scattered will end up going along the normals of that polygon that it's on. And so if you don't want these trees to be like going sideways when you have a displacement map on your ground, um, then you just click, you know, you start moving the normal align up and it will start to align it straight up and down and that kind of solves that issue. So that's useful tip to know. Um, and then yeah, some of these trees are just added in separately. So once I figured out the camera angle that I was pretty happy with, which by the way, to help you guys come up with the camera angle, um, let me turn on my Japanese girl model that I've got. You want to make sure that your camera, which I have here, is not so high or so low that it's unrealistic for how tall a person actually is. So this is another instance where it was useful for me to have this um, model in the scene so that I can see like, okay, well the camera should be, maybe, maybe it's like, you know, at her waist or um, somewhere around there who photographed this picture. I see a lot of people who end up like taking camera angles that look more like like this or something. I don't know, maybe this is an over-exaggeration, but they'll kind of they'll kind of do something like this and then they try to put somebody that was really shot down low and they don't they don't work together. Like Photoshop can't, they can, yeah, Photoshop's not gonna fix everything. <laughs> So it's important to know the camera settings um, if you're going to be compositing somebody into the image. And I knew that my camera was set to 44.3 focal length. I found my information through Lightroom and you could also see the camera data. Um, and then you wanna match it so that, you know, we're working with the same camera. And then we wanted to add some like atmosphere to this. So I added a volume, which looks like if you can see this box here, that's where I mainly put the volume because I don't need it everywhere. I just really, really wanted to get some God rays coming through these windows and I wanted it to be really heavy misty in the back because it'll end up like helping to separate me out once I have to go in the scene. And um, if I have everything misty, then it doesn't really give that punchy, contrasty look. But as you can see, adding a volume has already given us like so many beautiful like light rays coming through. Um, I made the volume size editor 150. If you go into the medium, I made the density is not that big and the volume step length is big so that it kind of ran a little faster. And also in the octane uh, daylight tag, I have a little bit of a medium, uh, which is like more fog. Uh, again, it's not doing a ton, but I didn't want it to be like no atmosphere in the front. So I did have a little bit. So let's talk about how we actually utilize the multi-pass system. So what you do here is when you click on this icon here, which is your render settings, and then you, instead of sticking with the standard render, you click down to octane render. Um, we know what the output is. This is where you adjust your resolution or your image size. But down here in Octane Render, it'll keep you at main normally. You click on Render Passes, and here is where you're going to save where your render pass is going to be. Make sure it is enabled. I usually click on PSB because it allows for a larger image format. Um, so if your file is gonna be over two gigs or four gigs, um, you'll be cool with PSB instead of PSD. 
Um, then I show passes and what showing passes does is give me all of these little guys within my live viewer so I can click on them and see what they're doing for me. So now here, under all these passes, I have so many options. So I usually use the diffuse, the reflection, shadow, and maybe the post normally. But in this case, I use some other things. Like I knew I had a volume in there, so I turned on my volume pass. And there's also this denoise volume under here, which was really uh, much better than the regular volume pass because it was less noisy. Um, if I go through each one of these, this is what the diffuse pass is giving me. So this is mainly, I would probably use this in Photoshop for a lot of the colors, uh, or if I just want the flat, straight up image with no lighting applied to it, that's what this is good for. My reflection pass, which is here, this is where I can put this in a screen mode and end up like showing off any of these little highlights even more so, so it gives it more of a reflective surface. Um, the transmission, I ended up using this in my Photoshop, uh, and you'll see later. So this is where any parts of the leaves that are being hit with the sun, it's going to show that up more. And if you put this in a screen mode in Photoshop, it'll just punch that up even more. So it'll look like, I guess, like the sun is really sticking through these trees very strongly. Now the transmission filter, I wasn't sure if this could be useful or not, but it does have color data as well as it almost looked like a material ID pass where I can maybe select things easy because it was very flat. Um, subsurface scattering, I don't remember if I used this much, but there was a little bit of detail here, so I left it on just in case. The shadow is a great pass to have as well as the ambient occlusion, which have the ambient occlusion on you go under info passes and you turn that on and these just help to give your photo even more depth when you stick this in multiply mode in Photoshop so we went through with the volume um, well the volumes if you wanted to really show off those god rays this is where this volume pass is going to be really epic because if you even put this in soft light mode or screen mode or maybe even a multiply mode almost any mode, you know, if you work with it and maybe reduce the opacity, it seems to me that you'll end up enhancing the image, either in vignetting it or adding more like lightness to the center of the image. Um, just seems like a really cool pass to have. So this is the ambient light pass. And if you go under your lighting passes here, you'll see it. Um, and that is basically everything you have without the sun. So pretend this is like a super cloudy day. That's what this pass is good for. And a lot of times I end up using this, maybe if the sun is too harsh, like this is the sunlight pass. And this is really harsh. So we wanna blend both of them together because neither one of them is doing everything for us, but together we can do great things. <laughs> so then we talked about the material ID pass, which is down here under info passes, it's matte ID. And this is great for when you need to make selections or if you want to just see your image in a different way um, so you can see if anything's intersecting. But mainly it's great for selections in Photoshop. And then lastly is the post. So the post you need to make sure that under, um, sorry, it will not show it. So, okay, in Octane settings, you have to go to post and then make sure you enable it. So if you don't have it enabled, it'll show you black. And then once you enable it, you can change how much bloom power they call it. Um, and then that will be up here under post. And this is great for adding even more atmosphere or glows to your scene. And you can put this in screen mode and just reduce the opacity or brush out places you don't want it. And it's really great. Um, also, I definitely use Denoise Beauty if I'm not making an animation because it reduces any noise and uh, if you have it for an animation I believe it causes flickering but for a still image denoise beauty is the way to go you don't have to keep your sample count super super high um, in order for you to have a really smooth image you can just go through here and if you see a pass that you're not sure like what it could be used for like I didn't end up using the denoise diffuse direct because when I turned it on and you see it pop up down here it was just black 
So this is not a pass that's giving me any information. It's not valuable, so I don't need it. So I'm gonna turn it off and that will help increase my render times. Anything you don't need, just don't have on. If you're not sure if you need it and you have, you know, you're not in a time crunch, then turn it on and check it out in Photoshop later. Just to show you my settings, I actually have this set to the standard 16,000 and 16 and 16 for diffuse and specular because I really wanted this image to be as realistic as possible and it didn't matter to me that this took five hours um, or maybe it was four hours to render. It actually wasn't that bad with two 2080 Ti's. So once we got the render out, this was the final image, um, but obviously it does not start there. So it kind of starts more here. And so I'm gonna just go through my layers to show you the multi-pass system or setup. So when you got everything turned off, this is my Denoise Beauty. And it already looks really good actually, um, but it obviously, you can see that we can enhance it more with these uh, different lighting passes or render passes. So if I turn the shadow on, if I hold shift and click X, you'll end up seeing well, when you stick in a normal mode, you'll end up seeing exactly what the pass looks like. But shadow passes, you typically stick in multiply mode. And you can see that this is just really dark and obviously not um, good. <laughs> so I added a mask and I just brushed in areas that I thought uh, helped kind of vignette the image a little bit, which is what I did here. The ambient occlusion. Um, I also added, it seems like I added it a little too dark here, but then I fixed that area with the ambient light pass. So ambient occlusion, um, again, when you have it in multiply mode, it, if you don't have it in multiply mode, it looks like this. So when you stick it in multiply mode, it's really dark, um, like the windows are black. So you don't need that, you don't want that. So you just brush in the areas that you think are useful. And in this case, it kind of helped over here to give more like shadow depth. Um, so I thought that was good. And then I, the ambient light, I didn't actually use as much as I thought I was going to, um, but I did use it in a little bit of spots like here where I just wanted to brush in some of the shadow detail. Um, so then the sunlight. So the sunlight was a beautiful pass, and this is right now in screen. If I put it in normal mode, this is what it came out as. And obviously you can see this is way too contrasty, although we're getting some beautiful things happening with the light. So when you stick that in screen, and then you kind of brush back, you know, the too strong of intensity, you're trying to brush that away, uh, this is kind of what you can get. So again, with it off, I thought it was too strong, so I kind of brushed it back. And I duplicated the sun pass and I just did some more things to brush in because I couldn't really decide like where exactly I wanted to brush. So to brush it, by the way, what you do is you make a mask, which um, if I delete this, this is how you make a mask right here. And when you make a mask, if you don't want that to be showing everything, you can do control I and that will invert your mask. And then when you click B for brush tool, and then in using a white brush here while on the mask, I can actually like paint back areas that I really like. And if I think, oh man, you know what? I went too far on the sunlight, I click X. And then that will allow this to go to a black brush instead. And then I can just paint it back. So I'm going to go to my history and just undo what I did. There we go. So, so the denoise volume was also really cool pass. So I put that in screen mode and I kind of just brushed in certain areas to give it a little more atmospheric look. Now the reflection, that um, is also this is what it looks like in regular mode. And when I stick it in screen mode, you can see that it's kind of giving like a lot more highlights to some of the shiny parts of like the tree, for example, right about here, I'll make that smaller, right about here. But obviously that's a little too strong. So again, with a mask, I just brushed in areas and you can see what it does on and off. So I think like in areas up here, it really gives more depth to the plants 
because it was kind of getting maybe a little muddy, maybe a little lost before, but this reflection pass kind of brings some things back. The post pass is really great for just adding atmosphere. So in normal mode, it looks like this, which just kind of looks like a blurry mess. So I stick it in screen and then I paint in with a brush, whatever I think is useful for the image. Now transmission, I actually didn't think I was gonna use this much, but it turns out that I did. So when I stuck it in screen mode, um, you can see that it really like brightens up the plants, maybe a little too much. So again, I just brushed it away in parts that uh, I thought were useful. Like some of these parts, um, I thought it was really pretty to give a little more like highlight detail over here. And same with the transmission filter. It just adds even more like look at these plants just kind of coming to life. Maybe it's a little too much, but um, you'll see I dial it back in a bit. So this one I actually stuck in color dodge mode because in screen mode it was a little flatter than color dodge mode gave it a little more contrast. Now if you're wondering how do you know what mode to stick these in, well you'll kind of see it. Like normal mode is obviously not useful for us in this case. So if you try sticking a pass like this and darken or multiply or any of these, it's not going to produce any results you like. Once you start sticking it to like light and screen, you know, color dodge, places like here, this will start giving you some cooler or, you know, more eye catching and popping results. Um, sometimes you can put these in overlay, soft light and hard light, maybe not vivid light or linear light, but these three sometimes produce some really nice stuff and you can work with that, but you should probably dial the opacity down or just brush it. And then when I was done with putting these all together, I thought that I, I kind of liked the denoise pass a little bit. I thought maybe I added a little too much, so I actually just stuck it back on top at 50% and I brushed back where I thought I maybe went too far in the passes. So that's basically how I started with this in the multi-pass system with the denoise beauty and then using all the passes, I brought it to here. Now that's just using the multi-pass system um, in Octane. But then I did a whole bunch of other things like adding uh, little flares of dust particles that if you put it in normal mode, you see I just grabbed it off the internet. And it just kind of adds this like, this little bit of like, you know, this is with it off, this is with it on. It's just some dust, you know, just chilling in the air like I believe you would see on a normal photograph. Now this is where I kind of, in subtle changes, start targeting just either the leaves or the trunk. So let me explain to you how I do that. In the multi-pass setup, um, there's the material ID that we made. You click Alt and then this little like empty space here, and that's where your eyedropper is or your eyeball that's going to just show that layer only. And when you click Alt and Eyeball again, it will turn it back off. Just make sure that when you click Alt Eyeball that you don't actually start messing with the rest of these layers because it'll it'll like undo that action um, and you won't really easily be able to get back to where you were. So yeah, when you click Alt Eyeball, just make sure to click Alt Eyeball again and you'll be good. So. If you want to just select this trunk, you can do that, but if you want to hold shift and then select and select and select, you can do that too. But let's say you wanna add all of these like trunks. So then you uncheck contiguous and when you select it, it'll select everything that is that material that is green or in, you know, in this case, the trunk material. And same with if you're like, oh, I really like, I just wanna target the leaves, then I just select um, this area, the yellow. And then if I hold shift, I can select the green. And now I've got a whole bunch of leaves that were uh, used with that specific material that I made for these leaves that I ended up using in some of the other plants as well. So once you have this selected, remember I'm still on the material ID, so it's selecting based on that layer. So once you have that, you can end up 
putting this in, I just click solid color and you can kind of like, I don't know what you want to do here, but now you have this really cool selection. And if you wanted to, you know, make your plants funny pink, you can start working with that because you have the, um, you have a, a really nice mask right now for your plants. So realistically, maybe what you'd want to do is bring it more to like the green tones or bring it more to like the yellowish tones and stick it in a color mode. But anyways, that's basically what I ended up doing with these leaves. I had a color mode in soft light or a color fill in soft light and I added some like curves and saturation. So from here, I do a lot of brush work to kind of bring the atmosphere back. So that's where I lightened this pass. Now this is where I merged everything together and I blurred it. So once I knew I was happy with everything down here, I just selected everything and I did Command or Control E to merge it. And I went up to Filter and Blur, Gaussian Blur, until I got the blur that I wanted. And again, I just brushed in where I wanted it to be blurry, which is kind of closer to the front. So that this isn't as much in focus, it just gives it a little bit more blur and your eyes go even better to the center. Um, oh, and then as you can see, sometimes you have these issues where the plants are just going straight into the tree trunk. So I just actually retouched that by using the clone tool and uh, some of the healing brush as well, but I'm not going to show you that now because that's, that's another tutorial. <laughs> so again, this, I didn't take this mask from uh, the material ID, actually I took it from the uh, denoise volume. So let me show you how you do that. So with the volume pass right here, you can click on channel and if you hold control and red or green or blue, in this case it doesn't matter, um, it'll make a selection for you. So if I click command alt, or I'm sorry, alt, or I guess on Mac it's maybe command, um, I don't remember, I'm using PC. But alt and eyeball, you'll go back to where you were, and then you can make a group, make a mask, and now you have this really nice, like, uh, mask for your fog and if you want to make the fog really blue you can pick a blue color with the uh, solid color right here and then let's say you put that in like soft light now you have some really pretty hazy blue fog so that's how you make a selection um, with some of your passes uh, that you maybe can't get from the material ID so that's actually what I did I added the blue fog a little bit and I added some gray fog by just, literally I just drew in, like I did the eyedropper tool, which is if I'm, if I'm on the brush tool, then I just hold alt and I select my eyedropper and, oops, and then I just kind of brush in very faintly, but I brush in wherever I want it to be with that color. So that's what I did on this layer, as well as here, if you see my hand, that shadow ended up like kind of highlighting my or outlining my hand so i just darkened it a little bit well actually that was a highlight i made a shadow so yeah so that's the background so once we get to me my husband took this photograph i'm gonna turn all the layers off so my husband took it's still not all the layers off but it's close enough so my husband took this photograph of me and um it's really sharp so if you were to that's what it looks like normally, which doesn't really match the rest of this image because, I don't know, I guess my camera is just awesome. <laughs> I love my camera. Um, so it's really sharp. So I needed to go in and while it was selected, go to uh, blur and put a Gaussian blur on it until I thought it was about matching what the render came out as. So that just has a little bit of a blur to kind of like fade me back. And then from here, this mask, the way I made it is I literally just used the pen tool, which is P, and I went in and I just like selected my entire outline from hand. I'm not going to do it now because it takes a long time. And then with the hairs, um, I literally just brushed that in. I used a really small brush, like, you know, um, maybe two pixels or something and maybe at 20% opacity, I just started brushing the hairs in. Um, so it's kind of a lot of like brushwork, but 
Um, that's kind of how I find hairs uh, to be done best. So from there, I just added like some, again, brushwork where I tried to fade in my foot and I added a whole bunch of different colors. Now this looks really yellow right now, but to be honest, I had these adjustment like layers on above and then I was adding these color moves underneath. So you don't really see it so much like when these when this is off, it looks worse, but when this is on, which is the way I was doing it, um, it looks better. So this, I'm still popping out like a ton. So I'm adding some like fog, which is really just same with like, I make a new layer, which is this one right here. And then using brush, um, which I need to increase the size of my brush. I hold down alt and click and I just start like literally painting places to try to like fit me into the scene a little better. Like painting areas around here. Now some of it's not gonna work out and if it doesn't work out, you just click E for the eraser and you just erase away what you think. Maybe that was too strong. You can reduce the opacity up here and you can just erase away whatever doesn't work for you. So I'm gonna delete that. So I did that basically here where I just like brushed a whole bunch of stuff to try to fade me into the scene more because there's going to be like levels of atmosphere that uh, would be in this greenhouse especially with a, a scene so foggy as this that is not in my actual photograph so I need to paint that in and then these adjustments it's kind of a mess because I wasn't wasn't expecting to do a tutorial on this um, so my my adjustments here, I again do even more brushwork to try to highlight some areas that I like. It's really subtle though. I bring up some contrast uh, with a mask um, and curves just on myself and I keep adding some more like brushwork to try to make everything a little bluer. So selective color, I sometimes I go and I try out selective color, sometimes I use the curves. I use all of these in conjunction with each other. There's no right way or wrong way of doing it. Uh, I use color lookups as well, which is kind of like LUTs basically, if you're familiar with video editing. And usually these are really strong, so if I turn this at like full, it's really crazy. So I usually reduce the opacity and I just brush in wherever I thought was um, enhancing the image. So if I turn that off and on, you see it gives it a little more contrast and a little more blue. Again, I added a little more fog, which just helps to solidify me in the shot even more. So a gradient map is uh, in black and white is a really cool way of desaturating your image in a more crunchy way. And sometimes I stick it in a soft light too, which will really crunch the image, but you don't want to go too far with that. So you always reduce the opacity. That's basically it. However, one more thing we're missing is just that the render is so silky smooth. Like it has no grain, which is not natural to a normal photograph. And I wanted this to be more realistic. So we have to add grain. I hope that helps. I hope I didn't go too fast. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And uh, this is my first tutorial, so I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up and pass it along to anybody who could use this. Thanks so much and happy rendering.